I just pushed on your your face and I yeah. saw you. You pushed oh on my, my face. Uh, wait, I'm gonna move my laptop to the other side of the table. Too. I think the light. I think is it brighter? Oh yeah, it's much brighter. So I'm. A, I have like a. Let me put my. Oh my so I have God. no. I haven't painted it yet. We're gonna paint it together. We are. Yeah. Okay. I'm and we're put... going. And we're gonna finish up the last few bits of the um. The other bird that we started, that really high key one too. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. I left it off at the, um, I put clear stencils okay. on it. And I did, um, so this is the one that you and I did. Oh my God, yeah. I'll show you. I'm going to get this higher. Give me one second. I'm going to get this higher. I need a little box. I need a box. Does that work? Does that work? All right, here. How is that a good view for you? Yeah. Do you think yeah, it's yeah. mm -hmm. it bright enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with this one, and then I just have to change my lighting to be able to see what you have. I can't because I have a light on. Uh, oh, and I'm totally okay. in the dark. This is really in the dark. What am I saying? Is this? Is, oh, that must be better. Is that better? Yeah, that looks pretty. That looks great, actually. Yeah, is the light, the lighting's better. Yeah. Okay. And do you want me to paint towards you? No, 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 no. Just paint however you're. Uh, it works for you. I can. I can flip my mind. I can flip my mind. <laughs> Oh my God, that sounds so funny. Uh, that, that's a great one. I can flip, I think we've all flipped our minds in the last uh, six uh -huh. months. At least one time, right? Yep. If I not think before. We have. Yeah. Yeah, at least once, right? <laughs> okay, so I, don't, the least. I don't have the same stencil than you, for, than you that you have, but what I was really um, loving about um, this piece was sort of what I was seeing like in these underneath areas. Yeah. Like yeah. these white lines like in here and things like that. So I would really start to start to draw out these shapes and areas um, because I think this is going pretty well. Um, yeah. Darkness is going pretty well. And I would also define, like start to define, um, sort of like my main character and then like what I call almost like supporting characters. Like I see a white flower here. I see a beautiful flower form here. I see a flower here, a flower here. I see a flower here. And then this becomes like this sort of um, secret garden. And I also love all of these sort of like hanging black, like viney things down here. The sea grapes. Yeah, like I just love these shapes. Um, this part right here, I think, is, is like where I'm gonna have like my blowout light, like as if I like made an like I could make an oval here. You know, mm -hmm. it's gonna be quiet. This is like like what I would determine as like a very quiet space. Okay. Just be like blended wax, and then also maybe I'd add a little bit of detail over here. Um, this one piece now is sort of like like the Lone Ranger. It's like so yeah. isolated and just the one thing. So yeah. I might try to do other things um, in this direction. So I'm just gonna paint it. And remember like, like what I kind of encouraged you to do last week and what I've really, um, you know, just decided is part of my essential process is I take one image um, 
and I just repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it until I feel like I've, I've done something. But only <laughs> sort of that abundant, it's almost like, too, for me, like, you know, I might not have a ton of money or I might not have the biggest property. I might not have the best clothes and the tons or tons of pretty dresses, but it's like, where can I find abundance in my life? And this is like, I guess the area, you know, that I care the most about. And I try to create abundance here so that mm -hmm. I'm not being stingy with myself or frugal. And I'm allowing myself a lot of, um, prints to play on and a lot of opportunities, a lot of different options. So I really like to try to think about like joy and abundance here and having lots of prints and lots of additional prints, right? So yeah. obviously, like for you, if you could narrow it down to like these five birds or, you know, six birds that you want to work with and then create this abundant portfolio of all these variations of how you see them or play with, you know, and how you feel and want to paint. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like a I like that. Yeah. Exercise. All right. So I'm using, I'm just going to paint with mud, with my mud, which is, you know, I don't know, neither here nor there. And, but this is just a very light colored. It's just like a very light colored kind of beigey. And I'm, I have to just put a layer of wax on your piece because I don't have the wax you have does that make sense yep okay so because this is just a print of your piece so again like i'm just gonna kind of are you video recording this yes oh great i loved that recording you sent me oh good okay so of course like when i put a layer of clear or muddy wax over this it really softened the whole thing like quite a bit right mm -hmm. and i mean so that's even an option for you to take this piece that you had and cover it with um you know another me medium or slightly uh, muddy medium or you know slightly toned medium is always a wonderful tool to soften anything blend layers right and um yeah. Uh, I think you have seen my demos on um, making kind of stencils, funky stencils, right? Bigger stencils, cutting paper. Didn't we do that last time? You know what? I'm trying to remember because, um, let's see, I did your first four uh, encaustic classes. Well, this and is yeah, yeah, we did do something with the paper. So this, I'll just review. It's kind of fun. So like, I just take regular paper, like whatever, white paper, newsprint paper or whatever. So remember I was talking about an oval? Yeah. So I might just like literally take a piece of paper and make myself a stencil. And then I love the paper cut. And I actually have a really good friend who's like a paper cut artist. So mm -hmm. like, I like to think about these shapes, right? So I just cut this shape, right? Yeah. Now I have this, but I also have this, right? right. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if I wanted to create an oval, right, or some type of frame for my subject matter, you know, and what's nice, too, is I can kind of, like, use this sort of framing technique to kind of, like, separate my layers, right? So, yeah. if I wanted this to be whiter, I could put it like this. So, then, I too, like, you can decide, like, okay, is it better, you know, do you like your window like this? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can play around with, do you like it like this? Mm -hmm. Right? And so what yeah. I can do is I can put another layer. I mean, part of me kind of likes it like this because it's more about the bird and this one flower. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I can do two things. One is I can isolate them and I can do a, a layer of wax around them. Right? Or I can do the opposite and I can do a layer of wax on them. Right, so that's kind of neat too to have these two, like yeah. have and have not. So let's say I do um, a layer of sort of a darker color around, and then I could I really want to do like a light circle here. Okay, I think I'm gonna go this way. Which way do you like better? Do you like it this way or this way? Um, you know what? I think I kind of like it like that. Like this. Because I feel, I feel like we're embracing more of the yellow background. Okay, so this color. Mm hmm Okay, so I'm going to try to like emulate that color. So look, I have this color. 
right? Which is like a butter yellow and I have white. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up my, I'm gonna pull up my hot plate here so you get a little bit of my, can you see the corner of my hot plate? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on there, right? And a little bit of this. And then I'm gonna use a little, a skinny little hockey brush. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna juice it up. Right, so I'm gonna make it pretty translucent. So I'm just gonna keep adding mud, keep adding mud, keep adding mud. It's getting a little bit darker, right? Because my mud is kind of dark and it's floating away. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white. It's got a little pinkness to it, right? And then sometimes I feel like the most important thing about this is more the translucency of it than the actual color because I know that I can alter the color. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and still, I'm not quite as translucent as I'd like to be. So I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna warm it up a hair. All right, so I'm, and look, I can always test it. I guess it's all right. All right, so I tested it on a nice piece of white paper, right? It's always mm -hmm. good to test it. Yeah. Right. So I'm just gonna go for it. And look, I am going like over, I'm gonna go right over what's important. But I'm just trying to illustrate this concept. All right, so that's a little, that's a little bit more opaque than what I like kind of hoped. Okay. But I'm gonna go for it. And I'm gonna thin it back using a couple other techniques. So here, I'm gonna heat it with the gut. Oh, hang on one second, I gotta plug my heat pad. I don't know why. Uh, where are you? Oh, hang on. Here we go. Okay, we got power. So I really want to fuse these two layers together, right? And then of course I have to kind of wait a second. And I might just do another Okay, I might just wait a second. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a dark color too and work on the outside edge while I'm waiting uh, for that to cool down. And sometimes I like like a dark blue um, or a dark purpley blue. Um, even though I might not leave the final color like blue, I think that mm -hmm. it's a safe one to paint with. And then I could always like, oh, this one's actually really pretty. Oh, this is like perfect. This is kind of a purple. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of the, of kind of like these brushy textures because to me, like sometimes just painting like this just suggests uh, like grass, like movement, right? Like, yeah. and even look, if I go over that other, I mean, these are where, how I like to like to like blend these layers. And even if I'm doing something somewhere else, like I just kind of like to do it. This is a great brush. This is like the hog hair bristle brush you buy at the hardware store. Yeah. And yeah, what it really good. gives you, what it really gives you is like, like literally like grass, like look at how much grass like texture I'm getting. Yeah. Like yeah. I like those brushes too. And they're wide. They're wide and short. Well, they're, they're, you can get them in multiple sizes. So I like, look, I have this one. Right, and then you can also give them like haircuts, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want them less bristly, you can like give them haircuts. I mean, you can trim your hockey brushes too, which I actually highly recommend. Yeah. Um, but what's really nice too, what even happened on my palette was like whatever that like this color was, this sort of purpley dark blue, mm -hmm. it's so beautifully with this yellow. So as I, like, and on the one side, I have it darker and then I have it where they connected. So I mm -hmm. like to use all sides, right? I like to go from here, do a couple of these, right? Do you see that? And then go yeah. back over here and then do a couple of those. Do you see how beautiful that is? I do. Right, and what else is really beautiful, Andrea, is the way now that they're, le they're becoming layers, right? Because, and they're having dimension because I'm going from dark paint to light paint, like right with this brush. And it's so light hearted, like what I'm doing. 
I'm also going over this other sort of semi-translucent oval that I made. So it's really like starting to dance, right? These legs, yeah. right? And really create depth. All right, so let's see now what I can bring back of the bird, okay? So, I mean, and at, for every photographer, I think this is like a terrifying activity because you're like, wait, that's my very hard earned photo that you just completely covered up. You're like, what the heck? <laughs> I, would never, I would never do that. That's horrible, right? Like, why would you do that? And the reason that I do that is to like sort of evoke, you know, this, this, this depth, like engage this fantasy, right? That we're looking, creating a painting. I'm sorry, I'm just looking for my palette knife. I don't know that I want to use a, oh, here it is. I don't know that I want to use a razor blade. Oh my God. And the other favorite tool that I have in the last couple of weeks is this, is like this crazy plastic. Um, it must've been some kind of like kids sewing project. Oh, but it's so fun to like draw, like, look, here's like your, your fun flowers, like, you know, to draw into the wax. Hmm. So you can kind of like, I like to trace things. I don't mm -hmm. know if tracing is like an activity, but like last winter when it was really horrible and the weather was horrible here, I was actually at night while we were watching TV, I was just, I would put um, tracing paper over these beautiful old flower books mm. and trace the flowers. Um, mm -hmm. And then I could use those flower tracings in my collages. Oh yeah. So there's always like stuff you can kind of do on the sidelines to like- Oh, like, definitely. You go back into your work, like, you know, we can be yeah. artists, we can be busy like all the time. Oh, absolutely. So this, this form right here, I really like this one that's kind of like, it's kind of like an umbrella. I don't know what you, like a- It's a palm frond. This one, it's so beautiful. Yeah. But like, look how too, like the cutout into the thicker wax just gets better and better. Like the cutout and the thin wax is cool but the cutter cut out into the thicker wax is even better. All right, mm. so let's get our bird back. So I know he's like right in here, right? Yeah, he's there. You know, speaking of interesting tools to use, a couple of weeks ago, I, I went to this uh, little island, Gasparilla Island, uh -huh. and I started like seeing all these little bits of seashells oh my gosh and i and i started to pick them up and i was thinking wow i could use some of these for scraping and like poking into the wax look at this one can You're you so cute oh, I, wait till i you show you that? yeah wait till i show you my seaweed collection i'll show you my oh, seaweed. I got a I, seaweed collection too yeah i was i um, love that yeah i was and i found this really cool um bamboo um like it's not it's not bamboo because it's what came from the beach but it was like it looks like bamboo and it's hard and it has like a pointy round end it's oh so perfect cool. okay so i'm using a little bit of heat just because this wax like cooled and like solidified so i'm using mm -hmm. a little bit and i'm just gonna get him out now i need to get this part especially off his body right here but I'm really liking like the texture this made. And I just like the light, like the layers that are happening here. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna use that heat gun just to give me that little boost, right? So I don't scratch the paper. And two, do you see how I, when I, especially this palette knife is such a great tool, Andrea. And when I take scrape off, right? I can scrape back in, right? Yeah, I've enjoyed to starting to use that. Yeah, I love it. And I love the, quality of the shape it gives me mm -hmm. because it's different than anything else I can do with the wax like this kind of like you know like scraping look how beautiful right so I'm softening the oval and then this I could use you know back in here wherever I need light right because this is my yeah. color right mm -hmm. so I can kind of dance it around a little bit all right so I'm starting to break up this oval which I like 
There's a couple artists I need to send you, if you can remind me. Um, well, one is my friend Hope Khan, um, also has residents. She lives like Jersey half the year and Florida half the year, but she's also interested in Florida birds. Oh, really? She, yep, She and she'd be a good friend for you. She lives in, um, Palm, uh, I guess she lives in Palm Beach area somewhere in the winter time. Mm -hmm. um, but she, and then this other person does like these florals, but they're all sort of like, oh, that was hot. They're all circular. They're like, they're circular. They're like these really voluptuous like garden settings. Okay, so my goal is kind of to break the oval up. All right, and then in order to like really pop him too, I'm gonna switch to another medium. And look, I can even trace him out a little bit. Oh, that looks so good. And I can draw, draw in here. Now I would probably switch gears at this point because I've made some nice, like, yeah, layers, and I've also made some nice like drawing. So I can now go in here with pigment sticks or pan pastels. But like, look how much fun like this little area became. Oh yeah. Oh, that's here. made quite an impact. Okay. So I think we can start to paint it and tone it. Do you like the direction it's going in? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So, and two, if I wanted to go back to the strong stencil here that we had, that was like, um, I could reveal a little bit more of that, right? So I could kind of just go in. And what's nice too, is when you put a layer over another layer, you can kind of pick and choose what you pull back. So did you see how I just kind of carved, not exactly the shape, but like a little bit of the shape and the palette knife also made this kind of cool, like archy cut. You see how, ar like arched cut right here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? But this took a lot of guts. I mean, it took a lot of guts to take, you know, that whole oval. I'll right? say it did. <laughs> right, and cover that up. Um, that's the one we did. Okay, so now look what I can do too. I can do a reverse oval, right? Since this was my shape, so I can cover this area. Do you see what I'm doing? I do. Okay, and then what color do you think we should put around here? I don't know, perhaps go in the blues. Okay, so we have the blue there. What if we went uh, brown, like this color? or purple i was thinking magenta even yeah i don't see the brown magenta or purple magenta um i'm gonna make it so you're gonna be surprised you're gonna so, do a brown i'm gonna do well these two are kind of they're kind of like these two can you see them yeah what do you have a magenta and a brown kind of um it's i think it's going to be like almost a red red brown okay um and notice too like i'm not cleaning the colors that i had on my palette oh yeah this is brown this is one of rnf's like i think it's like um a genius color because it, oh. can shape it red brown oh that's not the brown pink is it oh no though? it's brown pink yeah that's it that brown pink. Is? Yeah, yeah brown pink so look, Andrea, I'm actually going to put brown, pink, like magenta, and this one together. That's, what is that? One? That was that purpley. Oh. It's like, do you see? I do. It's purple. It's almost purple. And then I'm going to add some mud. Oh, and that's lovely. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more brown, pink. Um. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add an. I'm gonna add an ugly coat. I'm gonna add a baby poop brown in there for a second. Oh boy, that's where that's where I got thrown when I started to do this. If you remember, no, I think I think it can be useful though. I don't know. I think it. I think it's gonna be useful. Okay, so again, like I want this to be like as translucent as possible. I think this is a nice color. I'm gonna go for it. 
Yeah, it looks nice. Okay, so, and what I'm trying to do is get this, I'm just trying to get this translucent glaze, right? And I'm not gonna go, Okay, so let's see what that did, right? Let's see. And I didn't go crazy, but what do you think? I love that color. Uh, you know what, it's crazy. I think we made a good color. So that was four colors that made that color. So, oh, so you did put some brown in there? I did, I'll show you the four colors. And actually I can take a picture of it and email it to you too. I think some, So I'm really fusing this too, right? And I'm gonna kind of repeat some of the actions that I did. Um, I'm gonna take a picture of this before I forget with my camera. These four colors together. Hold on. Just before I forget, I'm gonna take a picture for you. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's, you know, parts that we love and parts that we don't, right? So I'm kind of loving what's happening here. Um, I think that this is too dark up here. I do like this corner, what's happening down there, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's see what happens when I scrape it back a little bit. And I think this is going to be the last thing I do with wax. But what I'm really liking is the way that they're blending together and that the light, that light, very light oval that I did is coming through from mm. behind. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I still have another opportunity to change the color, right? Yeah. And I'm also going to scrape kind of in the direction of those palm fronds. So that I'm getting that like those that semicircle archy feeling, right? Yeah. I'm not literal about it, but I'm getting it. And I'm just kind of getting like bl beautiful blended colors and movement and like lights and darks. And look down here, I have this beautiful. I have lots of beautiful texture and I can kind of reverse the fronds because this way they're going this right here. They're going this way. Yeah. And then at the bottom I can go this way and I've got some depth here. Now I don't know what's going on with this bird's tail. Does he have a tail? His tail is behind one of the leaves of the sea grape tree. Okay. So I don't have to worry about this area. No, this he's like that's fine. Yeah. He's like, I'm not looking for his tail is what I'm trying to <laughs> Right. It's not there. It kind of looks like he's on this branch though. All yeah. right. So I think this is looking pretty good. Now what the last thing I'm going to do, and then we're going to switch, I guess, to your painting. Cause I think this is kind of cool is, uh, I'm going to do pigment stick, right? So I'm going to do a dark color. Now I could do, now this is an interesting question. So I could do dark at the bottom, but mm -hmm. then I could do more light at the top or I could do green. What do you think? Wow. Or you could do green. <laughs> yeah, or you can do green because if you're talking about palm fronds, if you want it to be realistic, right? Or you want to be in this color palette, there's, so many opportunities for you as the artist to decide, you know, my leaves are going to be purple. You know what I mean? Or are they going yeah. to be, right? Are you staying in this fantasy or, right? And I have all this texture, right? So now I'm taking this pigment stick and this is like bright white. I mean, we can, and we can play around with the white too and tone the white, right? Once you decide you want to go for a light color, I mean, I can put more neutral white in it and soften that white. I could put a little bit of green in here. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, we could put a sharp, we can put like a sharp, chartreuse green and purple or magenta look really good together. Right. Beautiful. So like, maybe that is a good color. Right. And then look, if I, can you see that? Oh yeah. You can see I my can see very well. Yeah. 
Right. So this is like one of my favorite. I mean, this is where I really get just into my jam is mixing these pigment sticks, really blending co these colors because I just trust the RNF pigment sticks so much. They're so beautiful. I love that chartreuse color. Oh my God. I love this chartreuse color. And look what other color I just bought, Andrea. Oh my God. Where is it? It's so good. And now of course I can't find it. Well, brick red is awesome. Oh my gosh, where is it? It's like neon. It's like a neon yellowy green. Mm. It's really cool. And like even this nice. color might look nice in here. Right? Mm hmm Okay, so what I tend to do is just f kind of freestyle it in here and blend as I go. And then, you know, I'm going to go into the paper towel, right? And go and take it back, yeah. right? But I'm focusing on these um, lines that I made, like where I kind of drew. Yeah. Right into it. And I just love, look at, I just love these peachy greens and oranges on top of these purples. Right? Yeah, that really looks nice. Okay, so it still looks a little messy. And look, there's this color in here. But now we're gonna reduce it, right? So I'm gonna take the paper towel and I'm gonna blend it. Right? So if I like it somewhere, right? Oh, that looks nice. I'm gonna have to send this to you. You'll just uh -huh. have to your address. I'll mail this to you. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and then let's go. That looks kind of fun. It's kind of like a little. Now you, when you do this or whatever, you know, wh however you draw it, you know, whatever marks you make, it, it's totally going to be your, you know, yours. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to have anything to do with what I just did. But look, I just tried to like kind of. I still like that oval, and maybe. This is two, one color down here. All right, so let me do now the dark colors, right? So where are we gonna put dark colors? We need to kind of pop it. So definitely in him, right? Mm -hmm. Is that enough definition in him? I think he needs more. Looks fun from what I can see. I think that looks good. Especially up in his head, right? Is that good? Can he, is he popping? Oh, he's popping. <laughs> All right. What color is that? This is probably Payne's gray is my mm. number one. Yeah, Payne's gray is my number one, like dark color. Mm -hmm. I try not to use black. I mean, I like black, but I try not to, I try not to use black too often. Mm -hmm. So I just try to think about these shapes as being like, even though I lightened them and made them like super fun, they're still gonna have like a dark side and a light side, right? Right. Okay. So we really kind of like completely lost that hard stencil. I mean, it's under there. We kind of like lost it as like a... Uh, the old stencil? This stencil, this hard stencil that we had down here, we kind of lost it. Oh, the uh, the uh, floral one that he was like, that was underneath the bird? Yeah. I mean, it's very painterly and very abstract. Yeah. He's gone. Well, let's think about it. We'll leave it for now. But I'd love to see I you try, I'd love to see you try to go back to this painting. I will. Okay. Definitely after seeing that. <laughs> ah, well, I'm gonna scan it for you. I'll scan it for you. All right, so you wanna work on that. Let me turn this light out so I can see you. All right. Yeah, can you turn out? Thanks. I, I, I love that. Blinding. Blinding. All right, so let's see your. Let's see. What so, so I did. I did like what you said. I I did uh, 
You said do two or three more. So this is the one that we worked on together. And I put, um, you said to put some oval stencils. And I did, I don't know if you can see them with my lighting. Does that make it? Can you see the, I put some oval, like, like a little nest almost there. I don't oh, even yeah. know. Can you see it or not? The bird looks great. So yeah. I would do, Andrea, one thing, I would soften the text behind the bird, and how would you do that? Well, I could use some clear, or I could even go in with a translucent white. I would make one of our little masky things. Oh, okay. And maybe just do a translucent layer on there in like a light, very light uh, coffee color, or a greeny, like very, like these, like look how pretty, like these colors. Like, I think these I are your colors. Something, I have something similar to that that I made. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. And then lighten it. So this is like a sharp, this is like neutral white, white, and chartreuse green, right? Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. so beautiful because what the neutral white does is kind of like creams, cream, like ivory, you know, creams down the chartreuse green. Mm -hmm. And then you could add a Payne's gray or something in there to like kind of give a darker shade of it. Mm -hmm. It turns it very blue though, but either way, beautiful. What What's very blue? Oh, Payne's gray tends to be a kind of bluish. Oh. I'll take a picture of all the colors that we used today though. I just um, recently got some of that, so I don't, I haven't really, I don't, I don't even think I used it yet. I love Payne's gray. It's like one of my favorite, favorite colors. Um, all right, so we're gonna work on, are we going to work on that one or are we going to work on a new one? Yeah, well, let's, I'll continue with this one. The other ones that I did, I'll show you, I, um, so when I printed them out, I did full, full black and white. I, I okay. didn't want to use the colored, um, and oh, I don't know. colored flower, okay, because I can Yeah, I, I painted it in myself with watercolor paints, which I'm just, like, going nuts over. I'm oh, loving that, that. that. Isn't that so fun? This is my third. One um, other thing, Andrea, that you could get that would be really fun for you is this thing called, um, they're called intense sticks. And they're like, um, they're like, cr uh, they're not crayons. They're like square charcoal pencils, but they're actually watercolor. So you can draw with them. Oh. And then you take a paintbrush and then you can expand them. So oh, yeah. rather than having to paint, you can actually, I mean, there's a big difference, I think, between using a paintbrush to go around something and using a, like uh, a, a drawing tool and yeah. then using the paintbrush. So, I think, you know, I have some watercolor pencils actually now that I think about it. Right, you could use watercolor pencils or if you wanted to buy, try the Intense Sticks. They come yeah. um, in little bars like this, babe. Look, they come like this. They're so fun and cool. They come like this. Ooh. And then you draw, you can draw with them. You can draw a straight line. You can go, draw an outside line, right? And then you just take a, a, a brush and you can expand them and move them around. Nice. I'm always willing to go buy a new art supply. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I saw a demo. Well, because I really tried to get my lines to become more abstract and um, you'll figure out how, what, what you're comfortable using to get sort of yourself out of your get out of your own way so to speak that's why i always call it like get out of my own need to way. do that i really yeah. need to do that yeah what frees you up i mean what inspires you and brings like it's kind of like finding your sport you know like what 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 do you feel comfortable with having fun like what brings you you know you oh like yeah gardening photographing Right, or, or like even like with tennis, like do you like ball sports or you know, like what yoga, dancing, dancing, yeah. dancing like and yoga, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so do you have a layer of wax medium on there? Um, well, on this one, yeah. I mean, I'm all the way up to that stencil. Remember the place, yeah. the the stencil just done with medium. Okay. Oh, this That's is where this, I this am. is the first one. This is the, the new. This is the first one. Yeah, this is the okay. first one. So what do you so, feel like you need now? I kind of like the idea of doing the oval stencil with the, um, was it with the chartreuse? 
Yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing a semicircle, Andrea. I'm seeing like right. I'm seeing this shape. I'm seeing right. this shape, but maybe not so oblong, like more um, like a moon, like a half a moon. All right. Does that make sense? So if you have a piece of yeah. scrap paper, I do. You know what? And honestly, for this, Andrew, you could be using newsprint, scrap paper, uh, new newspaper. I mean, just whatever. Um, yeah. Cardstock. So just like you're, you're saying, just sort of like a moon shape, like. Yeah. So I fold the paper in half, and then I just, and I just cut it out. All right. Or if you just need half, you could just cut from the bottom. Yeah, let's see. You're only going to need half the circle. If you want the whole circle, you could fold it in half. If you only need half a circle. All right, let's see if I have any scissors somewhere. Ah, my God. I am finally, Andrea, so proud of myself that I have almost all of my supplies in one place and I keep putting them back. I'm getting better. Like scissors are over there, sandpaper's <laughs> over there. I'm, I'm going to go find some scissors. Super Andrea, bad. I made a tape box. All right, I've got them. Made myself a tape box. Do you know how proud I am of myself? A I tape made, box? I made a tape box, yeah. Like one cardboard box filled with all my rolls of tape. <laughs> and I've been really good. Like I've been putting the tape back in the tape box at the end of the day. Yeah, well, that's, that's the key. <laughs> that is the key. Actually, I heard a funny thing on the radio the other day that someone was talking about like the best uh, advice like somebody wrote like his his advice to life like to his kids or something but like that was one of the things he said is that when you when you take something and use a tool or something put it back not where you found it but like where it's supposed to be yeah yeah well <laughs> right if I could get everybody in my family to do that I would be a whole new person <laughs> I know right At, but us us too I mean think how much like easier like how much time we waste if we're looking for stuff like keys go on the keyboard and tape yeah. in the tape drawer and oh it drives me nuts when i need something and i can't find it i know so this is already pretty translucent this was a paint that i made a while back ago okay i like the idea of that like ivory creamy green light green Especially green and orange are really beautiful together and buttery yellow. Mm. That does sound pretty. I know. Matt, like, think of the uh, cantaloupe. Okay, I remind me too. I'm going to send you an email um, with the photos I took of the colors today. I'll send you a photo of the piece I painted and um, Hope Khan's name. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And she does encaustic too. She does like, she does a lot of stuff. She's bouncing all around all the time, like pinhole, oh, collage. That's always, that's always fun. Yeah, pinhole crazy. I saw pinhole, um, some, re some work the other day and it looked like actually an ultrasound picture. Wow. Kind of reminded me of like when you when we saw those pictures of our babies. <laughs> Fun stuff. So I'm thinking about doing the semicircle. So well, if I do it like that, then I'm going to. I love it like that. that. That's like more creative, right? Like if you do it straight up and down, that's. And um, but I love that. Go a little bit higher. But I'm gonna cover the bird with this color. Yeah, that's what we want. Remember, we want to cover it and then un uncover, right? Which makes okay. it look more painterly, right? Okay. So, All right. And if you can't, and remember, just like I showed you, if you're having a little trouble getting it off, just zap it with the heat gun for one hot second, like literally like on, off, and then it comes off, right? Yeah. Oh, pretty color. It is very pretty. I love that because what you're doing now is you're sort of le really learning how to paint with encaustic, right? Is you're really 
layering and weaving these um, parts together. And what I liked the best about when I painted for you this morning was when I had that little bristle brush on those pretty bluey purple colors and I was making like those layers over the over the white. Oh color. yeah. That and that was looked nice. so pretty. Didn't that look beautiful? That was very pretty. Right. I don't so have like, another color here to do anything like that. Well, maybe with the next uh gorgeous. Do you like, yeah, do you like that shape? Oh, I love that shape. Okay, so now fuse it and then remove mm -hmm. the wax on the bird. And you're gonna love it. And don't feel like you have to do cookie cutter. Like it's okay if there's a little bit of green on the bird. Yeah. Okay. And also a little bit of texture because you can always go over that texture or whatever with a little bit of a dark pigment stick or pan pastel. Never, it's like kind of don't worry about like a stain like it's almost like staining a towel like don't worry about it because we can just take that stain out yeah The other thing is, Andrew, do you have some, do you have some wood you. crayons? Excuse me. Do you I do. Oh, good. Okay. Because they're always good for like adding a little um, line or detail um, towards the end, right? Yeah. Oh, I dug. Ugh. I dug in really hard right there. That's it's okay. Still, still a little warm. And did you check with your painting? Is there anywhere else you can add that green? Yeah, I did put a little bit of it over in the uh, the lower hand uh, corner oh, over okay. here. Okay, good. I always like to bl I always like to add a color more than one place. You know what I wonder? Should I turn my my tablet so that I'm more of a horizontal view? No, it's fine. No, because I can. I like. I uh, no. I think it's fine. I can see your whole piece, and I can see your hot plate. I just pop my ears. <laughs> you okay? You okay? Yeah, I just blew my, you know how sometimes you blow your nose, you pop your ears. <laughs> right, so think too, like all those little marks you're making are like in this conversation about like the bird's feathers, right? Oh yeah, it's looking very much like the, the so, feathers. Right, so it's almost like, and really don't feel like you need to remove all the green because if you just take yeah. A nice dark gray or dark brownie gray. You can make color for the bird and you can just kind of work off of that nice texture that the green yeah. wax is made. Yeah, it's made a really, really nice texture. Right. So I'm feeling, oh yeah, gorgeous. So that's beautiful. So do you feel like the background white, like the rest of the panel is too bright white? The other corner, yeah. yeah. The left I, this one is it's actually not very white that was okay. one of my criticisms about this this morning i was looking at it and i was thinking it might be a little drab right so so let's let's do something to it drab and meaning like too stark like too bright or too no no i was thinking that maybe uh, because i was trying to make it um well, when we put that white on there, when we did that last coat of like the bright white and we just yeah. pulled it halfway across, yeah. I was understanding is that as being like the light source. Yeah. It is. So, but do you feel like it's too, 
simple. Yeah. You feel like it needs some more texture. These, and also, and, also, so wait, I want to, I want to just mention one thing. So when I look at the piece from far away, mm -hmm. like right now, the bird, the bird is a shape, but your flowers, they look like, a, it looks like a seahorse. So, oh, yeah. like, it's just the shape. It's like a, it's kind of an S shape. So in a way, I feel like the, the, the flowers need the color and the shape it is competing with the bird. So there's a couple of things we can do yeah. here. Yeah. There's a couple of things we can do here. So we can take the flowers and go all the way with another type of flower into the lower corner, mm -hmm. right? Or we can try to like soften them. Yeah. So you've like two, so right, so you have like a fork in the road. So you can either add more flowers. And if you added more flowers, you could add them in not a dark color, but like a pastel -y orange or a pastel -y yellow or a light brown or a light purple, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can try to do more green. Like you know your climate and your environment in Florida. So you know what it looks mm -hmm. like. You have to kind of tap into what you know it looks like around you and go, oh, like, uh, there'd be probably a lot of greenery, right? Like a lot of green, like palm fronds, like you said, or things like that. And because you said you wanted to incorporate nature and your environment um, with these birds, right? To kind of talk about their life and their, um, you know, you want yeah. safety and you want them to have a beautiful living environment. So maybe you could kind of soften the intensity of those flowers there by adding more green leaves around them. These are just opt. I mean, they're just suggestions, but you really have to decide which one you're comfortable with. So. I'm just getting rid of that, that straight line that was really bothering me. I've got the straight line that's appeared right here. I almost feel like I need to incorporate more of these flowers here. Yeah. Going in down through here or something. Maybe bring them on around. Okay. That's kind of what I'm, I'm feeling. And maybe pull back, pull in some more of this orangey color. It's underneath maybe a little bit orange and white, soft whites here to sort of, you know, keep that eye moving. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm, I, that's what I, I also think. Th remove your piece, turn your piece towards me again. I also feel like this top one, the top flower, the one closest to his beak, that thing, it's too dark. It's too strong. It's just distracting from the bird. Okay. So maybe, and mm, I see that. Right. So, so also too, in terms of like height and important, like dominance of subject matter in the picture, they're competing. It's almost like, um, there yeah. are almost two birds there or, you know, and I'm just really oversimplifying the composition to say yes. like, yeah, there's two things, same size. One is slightly going this way. One's this way. Like what is more important? So yeah. again, another technique and idea is just to add translucent glazes on it, right? And again, like, I liked how you used the half circle. So maybe there's like, maybe you wanna make a, a circle stencil. Mm -hmm. you know? And maybe you wanna put like a circle over that flower in a color and then another circle somewhere. I mean, I don't, I love polka dots, but if you, you know, you could do a square. Like there's an artist named Camille and he always uses a square. Like that's his signature thing is that he uh -huh. has, so if you cut like a square uh, out of a piece of paper, then you could put a square there. You could put another square. You could put another square. You could also put a leaf shape there, right? So you could cut a stencil that was like a nice, just simple leaf shape and you could put a leaf shape there in a translucent layer just to continue and then you could put it someplace else to kind of suggest is oh that's beautiful yeah perfect so cut yep perfect so it could be like uh it could be like a creamy beige it could be a 
um, little bit, it could be that green again in another tone, lighter or darker. And then you could also do that same stencily thing somewhere else, like you were saying, like at the bottom. And then maybe it could be, so what I'm trying to encourage you to is to use shapes that are not cookie cutter, like leaf or flower. They're not identifiable. They're suggestive of organic things, like botanical things, right? Yeah. I think I might want to put in an, actually another one because I'm seeing, yeah. I like it really pretty because it actually sort of like, you can still see there's a Gorgeous. flower under there. Yes, but it's not in your face and it's not. Yeah. Okay, so look, I'm, Andrea, what you just did is so beautiful is you're actually prioritizing what the viewer is paying attention to and mm -hmm. using the translucent glazes to create mystery, right? And, and yeah. so it's like a hierarchy. It, 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 Andrea, it's a hierarchy, right? It's yeah. like what is the most visible is the most important and what you blur down by using translucent layers becomes there like in the atmosphere, but not competing with the bird. Right. So it's right. like, it's like these layers. And also I think that the translucent layers just are beautiful. They and, are. Right. They're gorgeous. So, I'm going to do another one right in this one. area. Right. And I like the other two shapes and you could start like, and look what I just did. I was just sitting here, but that oval, like I poked all these holes in it. Mm -hmm. Just the needle, but like the next time I use it, I'm going to have like little hole, like it could just be another cool pattern. So like I could make a leaf shape and I could poke a few holes in it. I mean, you yeah. can just make these handmade stencils. And I, this is like a very common shape for me. Like I like this kind of like cellular, n imperfect oval. Um, mm -hmm. for, for a long time, I was actually cutting my photos. I was cutting like the corners off my photos and making them into these sort of like more circular, softer, <laughs> just so they weren't like, they weren't the standard, you know, eight by 10 sort of rectangle, yeah. well, you know? Yeah, you're very brave doing that. <laughs> well, right, that to me just seems so like stiff and photographic and masculine, right? So this is a much more feminine yeah. form for me. Yeah. Like, more it's cellular, very true. right? Very softer, true. softer. Yeah. And then two, you're going to start to really become more familiar with your own intuitive, what I call context and syntax, which is like the shapes and, and forms that speak to your, your inner nature, right? Outside of what you know to be real in, in reality. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So that, okay. That's interesting too. Some people are very triangular, you know, some people are very linear. Yeah. I'm not, I, I'm a little triangular, but I actually like to paint in. Oh, oh shoot. Where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> I fell off the shelf. Humpty Dumpty. I was wondering how long that was going to last. <laughs> oh, I fell off the shelf. So my last little, I'm not sure if my last little one was as successful as the first one that I did. You kind of can't see the shape. That's what it is. It got really blurred in there. The colors are really pretty though. No, I love it. But love I'm it. not sure that it accomplished very much. I just, I have this, this, I think I'm going to have to knock back this other orange flower here a little bit because it's, I agree. It's too bright. It's really grabbing my eye. Right. It's too bright. Okay. So I should probably give that a quick fusing. I don't even remember if I fused that green. I don't think I did. Oh, I did. So, and then remember too, like now that you've created these sort of translucent shapes and glazes, you can also go over the top of them with a little bit of pan pastel, 
you can also draw into them, you know, um, mm -hmm. and sort of like I was doing, like just playing with, you know, pushing and pulling the surface texture, right? You yeah, I think I should do that because I've lost that flower um, imagery. Uh huh. And um, I think it'd be nice to bring it back with some engraving in there. There it is. Like yeah. right in this area. That's good. And then are you going to, are you thinking of color that you're going to pop in there or like, what about darker green? What about playing yeah. with some green? Um, yeah, it definitely needs to be a darker color. Uh, sure. Dark Desert. green, do you have like Turkish green, umber? You know, you might write really like green gold. Do you own a green gold? Um, what, what do you think? Are we talking pan pastels or pigment okay, sticks? Okay. Green gold is an RNF color. It's beautiful. I'll have to see if I even have that. I probably don't. I don't have a lot of. <clears throat> if you have a green and um, if you, oh, you said you had paints gray, right? I. I believe I do. Let's see. The so sap green and Turkish green umber and the um, oh, yeah. those are all good greens. Yeah, I do have actually a pretty nice green here. It looks like it's sort of like a, I don't know, it's kind of a darker, it's a darker sap green. Oh, sap green's beautiful. Put a little, mix a little bit of that up in there. <clears throat> I don't know, my wax is kind of warm. I might be breaking it down a bit. Oh, yeah. You just need a little bit more time. I could maybe, you know what I could do? I could use a, I could use a paintbrush to get it in there, maybe. You can use a paintbrush or... Um, I'll do it like or this. You do, if you feel, yeah, you could do a paintbrush. Yeah, I don't want to, because I think that that's really um, soft in there. Do you, have it, it. do you have it as a, oh, you have it as an encaustic paint, not as a pigment stick? No, it, it is a pigment stick. I'm just You're liquefying it, it. Yeah. Do you have, um, do you have a pigment stick extender? I do. Yeah, That's a nice way to do it yeah. too, or just like make it more um, thin, thin it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I'll run some of that through there. Yeah, you could put a, even put a little bit on the end of a paper towel, and then when you go to rub it, use that as the rubbing. Can yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it's almost it's almost like 10 after 11 do you are you kidding me no ah. <laughs> okay oh well actually it's weird okay my laptop says 10 after 11 but my phone says 11.05 so I don't know yeah and mine um, says I want, to see you, I want to see you rub that in first so okay just I want to see that okay. and then when are we meeting again you know what this is our last class what yeah, because my first one was two hours, remember? Oh, that's right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. I've gotten a lot out of it. But I'll keep going with this. And, uh, oh, I love the way it's, it's coming out, too. Right, and remember, remember, this is like a um, this is like a tug of war. It's like a, a give and take, right? So you're gonna like, you're gonna get the impulse to try something, and then you're gonna live with it. Oh, I love that. 
And you yeah. know what, Andrea, I cannot tell you how beautiful it is that that orange seahorse isn't uh... <laughs> the orange seahorse. Oh my God, the orange seahorse is, is quiet. And, oh, that's so, and you know what? The dark it, it, in, in comparison to the orange with the bird is just so much prettier. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wanted to add a little bit of like a peachy pan pastel, like very translucent into like the outer realms of that, like over to the left. Yeah, yeah. right in there, you could tie yeah. it. And again, Andrea, remember, we're like suggesting gently, like we're not over illustrating or trying to be literal, but you could just take the pan pastel and do like boop, 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 like little petals and then just like, like ghosty it in there and it would look really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, like dream I'll, spaces. I'll keep at it. Thank you. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece. All right. Well, okay. I, I hate goodbyes, but okay. So I know I'll see you again, right? Somewhere. Oh, yeah. You'll see me again. I'm coming to Texas in uh, December. Okay. Me too. Inshallah. Hopefully. I hope across, that happens. I'm and I'll probably be on another one of your encaustic. I've been joining the encaustic group. So I'll probably be entering another group class. So. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to do I'm out there. Yay. I know. Keep up the good work. And um, did I ever send you got to remind me, did I ever connect you to the girls in Florida? Oh, no, we haven't done that yet. Okay. I'm I, sure I can look them up easily if you don't think about it. It's okay. I'll, I'll find them. No, you just got to remind me. Uh, okay. Sherry, Sherry and um, um, I'm trying to think of the other one. I think it's, oh my God, I'm totally spacing on her. Madeline. Okay. Okay. And they run the Naples group. And then my friend yeah. Juan is also in Florida in um, Palm Beach. Yeah, she's and like an hour and a half away. So that's, I'm in between everybody. It's cool. Oh We're God. a triangle. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, you're so lucky. Oh. It's beautiful out there. And yeah. you'll like Hope's work for sure. She does okay. a lot of really cool and caustic work. Awesome. Thank you. And Thank I'll send you, you, can you this. Can you, uh, uh, you just have to email me your address. Okay. Ah, uh, you're so sweet. All right. Fine. Oh, I loved. I loved painting this one. It was so fun. Thanks. I'm glad. Well, thank you for everything, and I'll, okay, I'll see you, you soon. Beautiful. All Good right. Job. Beautiful, beautiful work. Keep it up and stay in touch. And I, I can't will. wait to see you. I hope. I can't wait. I hope we make it to December. I mean, we'll yeah, make we it to will. December. I hope we make we it to will. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye. 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 Have a great day. You too. Okay.